The royal wolf belongs to the group of fancy dry flies because it has an eccentric appearance and does not imitate any insect. The materials used in the tying process increase the buoyancy of the fly and make it suitable for fishing on fast flowing waters, especially in less bright hours of the day, when its light wings allow the angler to distinguish them clearly on the river surface. I start to build the royal wolf by selecting a regular shank hook size 16 to 12 and removing its barb with a pair of small pliers. I fix the hook in the vice jaw, placing it with shank parallel to the working table. I take the bobbin holder loaded with a black thread and I bind the thread to the hook shank. Then I cut off the excess with the scissors. From a back tail I cut a bunch of brown hair. The original dressing of this fly contemplates the use of elk hair, but this ingredient can be replaced with a common buck tail. I remove the shorter and the finest hair from the tuft. This action is accomplished by grasping the tuft from the apical section and pulling out the shorter and the slimmer hair that lies at the base. I introduce the back tail tuft in the hair stacker and I repeatedly tap the tool on the table to align the hair tips. I place the back tail on the hook and I bind it with repeated turns of the thread. These tails should have a length similar to or slightly lower than the hook's shank. I cut off the baser portion of the back tail tuft with the scissors. From a peacock wool feather I choose two or three long hairs rich of iridescent barbs. I cut off a short portion of the tips and tie these ends over the fixing point of the tails. I grab the peacock hairs from the base and twist together so that the quills get interspersed. This will cause the burbs to protrude outwardly. I turn the twisted hairs three or four times around a short stretch of the hook shank to realize a homogeneous and compact butt. I untie some coils of black thread to bring it close to the peacock butt and I use it to secure the hairs against the hook shank. I cut off the excess portion of peacock hairs and take a second bobbin holder loaded with a spool of red floss. I bind the red floss to the hook shank just above the peacock butt. I cut off the wasting end and I turn it around a short stretch of the hook, distributing it in regular and uniform steps to build a body portion with a nice cylindrical profile. I secure the red floss with the black thread and I cut off its surplus. In front of the red body section I tie the apical ends of the two or three peacock hairs used to realize the first butt. I twist the hairs together, rotating with the fingers of one hand and turn them three or four times around the hook shank just in front of the red floss. In this way I build the second butt of the fly. I secure the peacock hairs with some turns of thread and I cut off the surplus. From a white calf tail I take a large bunch of hair.
I grab it from its apical and I remove the shortest hair from the base. I introduce the cuff tuft in the hair stacker and repeatedly push the tool on the table to align the tips of the tuft. I place the hair tuft on the hook and I bind it at the centre of the front third of the hook shank. I lift the calf hair and turn the thread several times in front of them, as to secure them firmly with the points upwards. These wings should have the same length of the hook shank. I take the scissors and cut the portion in excess of the calf hair. I split in two the hair tuft and I pass the black thread in crossed turns between the two wings, so as to give them a stable V shape. Then I bring the thread close to the second peacock butt. From a natural round cock neck, I take two hackles with the fibres, just a little shorter than the hook shank. A good quality roster scarp will provide feathers dense of fibre and particularly suitable to fluffy flies such as the royal wolf. With the scissors, I cut the baser portion of the hackles, characterised by a marked triangular profile, and I remove some fibres along the stumps. I place the two hackles one over the other, placing the basal ends at the same level, and I bind them to the hook so that the tips protrude backwards and with the back, that is the shiny part, facing the hook shank. I bring the thread behind the hook eye. I hand to the hack plier and attach it to the tip of the first roster feather. I wind the hackle with narrow turns around the front third of the hook shank. I face this step calmly and carefully, lifting the calf hair to avoid catching them with the feather coils. In order to realise a beautiful colour, the hackle turns must never overlap and it is important to reach the wings before overtaking them to compose the front section of the floating structure. With two or three turns of the thread, I secure the hacker tip just behind the hook eye and cut its surplus with the scissors. I attach the second feather with the hackle pliers and wrap it around the collar to make it thicker and even floating. In order to achieve a good aesthetic result, I have to make the second hackle with the same number of turns I did for the first, so that the stems of the two feathers are placed side by side and do not overlap. With the thread, I secure the second hackle just behind the hook eye and cut the surplus. I slightly push backwards the collar fibres and I realise the fly hat with some turns of black thread. Then. I whip finish it. I 
might distribute a small drop of clear vanish on the head to weld the thread and prevent it from melting. The tying process of the royal wolf is over and the fly can be stored in the box ready for a fishing session.